let's start with let's start with super positive because I've had people commenting in the questions asking about that. Um, so I'll just read out what it says on the front. Develop in standard black and white ISO 0.8 black and white slide film. This is a super unique film. This is not a film to pop in your camera and shoot your uh, right. Uncle, Louis, Uncle Louis' birthday party with. It is going to produce a really high contrast image. Mm -hmm. And when you develop it normal, yes, it will produce a positive. I think some people are going to be shocked by the, the high contrastness of the images they get. Now, I personally, I tend to, to tame that high contrastness by developing it in Caffeinol, mm -hmm. D96. Okay. And then when I do the scan, I also tend to adjust the, uh, the contrast levels. I'm not big on super high contrast films personally, yeah. but it really, it's a very unique, special film that's gonna give a very different look. So someone, a couple of people have pinged in with some specifics. So Dale Willits asked, is it the same as Kodak 2468, but with sprockets? No, that's different. Because that's that's not slide, is it? Uh, that I think may also produce a, a positive image. Ah, okay, but it is slightly different. Okay, and then the other one that's come in saying, Mike, I'd like to try super positive but extreme low exposures with a big stopper. It's the first person who's looked at a 0 0.8 and said, "I need I need less light." And um, could you give any advice on reciprocity failure? <laughs> <laughs> on, no, no. I was going to say that the film was intended for use in, uh, I believe, uh, to make fi uh, to make uh, finger fingerprints. Yeah, fingerprint study. Yeah, I, I read that in when we were putting on this. Well, just, this is a scientific film mm -hmm. being used very unscientifically by people in their thirty-five millimeter cameras. Well, which makes sense for the contrast, right? Because when you're doing fingerprints, you you want it to be binary. You know, there's contact or there's not contact. You don't want, oh, there's, it's sort of in, in contact with the film. I mean, the, the film itself is, is it's, it's practically clear. Like you could oh. see my face through it. So, you know, to, to look at the film, it's amazing, actually. Well, Leslie's just pinged in saying super positive is freaking magic. <laughs> okay. He would know. Well, if Leslie's going to say it, okay then. And then, um, so blue sensitive. So we 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 shot up to. Well, I mean, it's a high speed film basically. It's ISO six uh, <laughs> after that one. So you you got to really really make sure you're on it. Um, what's so funky about blue sensitive? Well, uh, the fun part is that the actual film <laughs> is lavender. Hang on, if you hold that hold that up again, one sec. I'm just gonna. Make you that see that? More obvious. Get rid of that. There we go. Yeah. So that's a blue backing. Yeah. Yeah. So right. the film is truly blue, but it's called blue because it's uh, blue sensitive, meaning it sees that spectrum of light. Um, it's meant to be shot outdoors where there's lots of blue light. Mm -hmm. um, and it produces a very fine grain image. Uh, and once again, this is another. Um, scientific film it's, it was never designed to be shot in a camera but it produces very very pleasing uh images and oh, no, i love the um the sample photos like the portraits that were coming back on that one and and what's brand new over here at fpp and i know it has not made its way uh over the ocean to analog wonderland yet but the the d96 developer uh, it's a mellower developer, and it works very well with all of these strange films. Just write that on my order pad. One second. <laughs> a, a mellow developer. Is that in, as in terms of flavor? or? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes really well with a nice spicy fixer. Yeah. The, the, the first thing I do is get on the horn with Leslie Lazenby. <laughs> yeah, you know, so we're thinking of getting this D96 in here. You know, can you do some tests? Mm-hmm. So both Leslie, uh, Matt Mirage, uh, and Mark O'Brien have done uh, the actual testing, uh, which is great, which is, is why the FPP, it, you know, I know I'm part of it, but it is so wonderful to be part of because 
um, the group, the podcast group, they are wonderful at kind of helping out to figure out how to make the films we offer work so well. And that I'm very proud of. So if we're going to introduce a new film, we'd like to have some great tips of how to develop it. And I think that's when we first started working together, that's what made me so excited because there's a lot of people on, on eBay, on Amazon, um, or, or in workshops who, who are getting hold of esoteric films and, and creating things. And that's fine. And that's great. But in terms of them being able to sell something, and again, these are premium films, right? Um, so for us, it's between 12 and 13 pounds, I think. Like, if someone's going to spend that much money, it can't just be for the novelty of having a crazy ISO. You need to know that what you can do is create good results. Um, <laughs> but what we're doing is we're sourcing films that are not intended to use in a motion picture camera or a still photography camera. And we're making it, we're making something else out of something that was designed for a scientific or military operation. Yeah. And, so, and, that, and that, that again, I go back to, I think that's the real difference is that you, the, the time and money investment from you and the whole gang of, you're not just re-rolling it, you are also branding. And again, that's something that, that always, again, some people get very upset about finding out that, that things that are the same brand are the same base emulsion or made in the same factory. I mean, I remember when, um, I don't know whether you guys had it in the US, the FOMA vintage packaging. Do you guys get this? In the one to oh yeah, absolutely. And um, yes. and and they sent this to me, and it was it was like a pound more for the same film. And I first looked at it and said, "This is crazy! Like you've added twenty percent onto the price for the same film." And you're saying it's the same film, but it's a pretty box. Mm -hmm. That seems crazy to me. So we got a very small amount in. I didn't really market it. I didn't write lots of email. Nothing, and it sold out within in three days. Well, now you discovered that people <laughs> want a pretty box. People coming <laughs> from box. man. Coming from the man who introduced a film called Dracula in October. <laughs> so what was the? Have you got another monster lined up? Have you got an Easter bunny for the weekend? Looks very good for the werewolf. <laughs> werewolf, nice. Okay then, I, I like silver content. I am gonna have to wrap up. We have one big question left. Before I go into that big question, that's gonna be very standalone. Is there anything else that you wanted to say, Mike, or anything else that? that you thought people would want to know about, um, or are you feeling pretty? Uh, no, just really just that I'm as, as, as excited as ever uh, about film and film photography, and I'm still discovering and learning new things, which would seem almost impossible, right? Well, Mike knows it all. Well, no, I, I, I never shot with these little 8 millimeter cine cameras before, before last year. So... Um, uh, I'm very excited to be bringing back the regular 8 format. Uh, we're now on the threshold of bringing back Minolta 16 film. Mm -hmm. uh, That's the, and, the little spy film. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. And so anything we could do to help to kind of put a, a format back into circulation, uh, top of my list, of course, is 126 cartridge format. I have been having a hard time getting the ear of existing companies. It's like no one cares. <laughs> well, I can tell you that Neil Piper in the comments has been banging on about it to me over Facebook in the last 24 hours. When can Mike get 126? So one person cares. I mean, I don't think he runs a factory, sadly. Not yet. But it's a, I have, I, Listen, whoever has the equipment, it's a simple operation. The film is 35 millimeter in width, mm -hmm. just a different perfing. Let's get it going, guys. There are millions and millions of cameras on eBay right now that cost five dollars. Well, this is why the camera hack thing, and again, it was, it was I think it was a, um, an introduction from you. Like the the one two six adapters again flew because even though it's a it's not as good as if someone was making it in a factory by themselves, but it still gets these cameras working, and everyone's love for these cameras. The one the one two six adapters fly out the door every day here at the FPP. And on that note, um, Mike, any final thoughts, words of wisdom? Yes, yes. Can you please ask Lamography about 126 film? <laughs> all spam, well, we'll all have a couple more drinks and then spam them on Twitter. Brilliant. Graham, any last words of wisdom? Uh, uh, my only request is, Mike, in your show full of awesome sound effects, please, for the amazing Leslie, who we like to call Leslie Laser Beams on our podcast, please can have some laser beam uh, sound effects, please, for the amazing Leslie Laser Beams. 
and the rest of the world. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. <laughs>